welcome to the course on power quality. So, we will like to cover today improved power quality converters AC DC bug boost converter. We uh, will start with the outline having introduction classification of bug boost improved power quality converter then principle of and control of bug boost converters analysis and design of bug boost improved power quality converters the modeling and simulation and performance of bug boost improved power quality converter. Uh, numerical examples summary and followed by references. Well, the objective of this lecture is uh, considering the requirement and applications of a, a bug boost improved power quality converter. Then we will like to con give a configuration and classification of bug boost con improved power quality converter. Then we will talk about control of bug boost improved power quality converters, like to analysis and design of bug boost converter, then modeling and control of work boost converters. So, well coming to this work book to improve work quality converter, I mean it offers, they offers wide input and output voltage range operating capability and also they also provide high power factor at supply side and uh, they have a natural protection against inverse current and they have a high performance characteristic during startup and overload conditions over low electromagnetic in in interference with the proper design AMI filter and uh, they, they have a easy implementation of transformer isolation, high frequency transformer isolation and they provide better input output current triple characteristic and they have efficient operation and they provide wide range of application from phi watt to phi kilowatt. So, some of the applications of these bug bush converters are like electric vehicle uh, battery chargers which are coming big way for different rating uh, electric vehicle like maybe like a two wheeler chargers, then three wheeler chargers, four wheeler chargers, then the electric drive system for like a PMSM drive, then silicon motor drive, permanent brushless DC motor drive, then lighting system like a LED bulb, street light, highway light, T8 tube light and luminaries and flood light. I mean with the of course because this all LED light needs the DC supply and which we can get certainly from AC supply by using these uh, you can call it bug boost improved wall quality AC DC converters like. Then telecom power supply I mean they also need the DC supply. Then the home inverter domestic home inverter and uninterruptible power supply. Then computer power supply welding machines which uses this very high frequency transformers I mean and it facilitate for that conversion. And of course, some of the more applications are like wireless power transfer again for charging and for other applications then more electric air aircraft traction system, home appliances like air conditioner, LCD display, washing machines and HVDC and many more. Well, coming to the classification we classify based on supply system like maybe these bug boost improved power quality converter can be classified on basis of like single phase and three phase and in single phase we can also again have a power flow directions like maybe unidirectional and bidirectional and for three phase again unidirectional bidirectional. So, structure based classification of course, we talk about with the based on non-isolated and isolated. In many application we use of course, non-isolated topology I mean like which requires I mean this DC supply may be constant or variable DC supply and of course, for isolated configuration there are plenty of applications because all these electronics gadgets which we are talking about some of them they need the isolated supply and of course, in isol for providing isolation we have the high frequency transformer of which the size cost and weight is are also reduced and the efficiency also increases like. So, for of course, the configuration in the non isolated category can be further classified like you are using bridge type structure bridge in the sense we are using from even from single age phase AC supply we are taking like a typically a drive bridge rectifier for conversion of AC to DC or we are using semi bridgeless or we are using fully bridgeless configuration of input uh, rectifier like in the isolated also we have again same bridge type or semi bridgeless or fully bridgeless configuration like. There are plenty of topology, the classification based on the topology we can call it like a conventional bug bush converter, then cut derived bug bush converter, then single ended primary inductance derived bug bush converter, 
then jitter derive can be called and canonical switching derived by Bush converter. And the basically classification based on the design and control, we call it like a bug boost improved power quality with continuous conduction conduction mode control of course which uh, the design is much different than what we go for bug boost improved power quality with discontinuous conduction mode control i mean like so even design have to be different then the that's the reason control have also be to be different in both case and then bug boost improved power with the critical conduction mode control or it also called boundary mode control or we call it like a uh, typically I mean the intercepting of both the control. So, coming to typically first category of single phase bug boost improved power quality converters. So, the simplest topology is like we use the single uh, single phase cascaded universal bug boost converter. So, what is we do in cascaded first we are having like a of course, with the MI filter we are putting first bug converter and then followed by the bush converter. I mean typically here of course, this inductor is sharing for both bug boost converter, but in this case we are using the two devices like I mean here. The of course, the benefit of this converter that the stresses on both the devices are much less I mean in this configuration like I mean. So, what we are doing cascading of buck and then boost like as the name suggests like, but of course, it is also practically possible, but of course, here we have a even the polarity you can call it with the plus minus here I mean like, but there is a of course, it can be a single device sing, a single phase unit buck book converter as you can see it here. So, the benefit here is only you are using one device. So, you are, I mean, are able to eliminate virtually one device and one diode in this configuration com com compared to the upper configuration. Uh, but the, the disadvantage is that uh, the polarity is reverse here and the second disadvantage is that the voltage across the device is the sum of input and output voltage which was not the case in previous one or so. Of course, you can design this inductor either continuous conduction mode or con discontinuous mode or boundary condition mode that is the basis we divided the control in that case like. So, coming to like a of course, single ended primary derived single phase unilateral bug bush converter. I mean here of course, we have uh, is called the called fourth order. So, we have a like input inductor output inductor of course, MI filter there either you can keep it here or you can keep MI filter here and here the of course, you have a typically two inductors and then uh, you can uh, you have a output of course, here the polarity is not changed in this case. Uh, now, you have a many design for you can call it for DCM because now you have a three component with the energy transfer L 1, L i, L o and capacitor C 1. So, now you can think about like total design corresponding to DCM and CCM may be 2 to power 3 the 8 design and you can have all DCM, you can have all CCM, these are the two exclusive design, but you can have only one uh, component having a discontinuous variable like either in the inductor it will be discontinuous current or it can be uh, like a continuous current into that. Similarly, capacitor also you can have a discontinuous voltage across the capacitor or you can have a continuous voltage across the capacitor. So, like this you have a 2 to power 8 design and you select the best design which is a, I mean acceptable to you for particular application like. So, if we talk about in DCM for inherent power factor correction normally we prefer typically output inductor current discontinuous the reason being that if you take input inductor discontinuous the size of EMI filter will increase. But if you take a voltage across the capacitor discontinuous then the voltage across the device and current especially the voltage stress across the device and diode increases substantially very high. So, you have to select the voltage rating quite high like also. So, these are the relative merits and demerits of course, of these design and of course, the another is the CUC derived single phase unilateral bug boost converter. So, in CUC also number of component in SEPIC and CUC are same as you can see input output inductor and this is the you can call it the capacitor energy transfer element, but here the drawback is the polarity of the output voltage reverses here like I mean. But uh, originally the CUC had developed it to make this input input inductor and output inductor almost continuous current. It also called that it should be noiseless converter and it should not have a noise. So, inductor current should be almost constant in the input and output like of course, in CCM you can operate that mode also, but the size of the inductor will be substantially large. So, people have not thought how really this converter even a CUC have not thought that how the people will be operating this converter for different applications now. So, you again you can have even a 2 to power 3 
design like a design because you have a three element for which you can have a every element either voltage or current discontinuous I mean capacitor ca voltage can be discontinuous again this also if very voltage high voltage stress across this if you are taking capacitor voltage discontinuous across capacitor or you can have a inductor current discontinuous then you will have a, a typically the size of EMI filter will increase. But if you take a output inductor discontinuous current of course the other though merits of compared to other design certainly is better in this case like Amman or so. So, that is another I mean like for with power factor correction and the third is the canonical switching, canonical switching derived converter I mean like here you can say here also you can think about this is the energy tra transfer device. So, if you can make it typically this current inductor current discontinuous then we call it DCM mode of this converter and or you can have a continuous conduction of this. So, that is also a simple I mean as have been simple bug boost. So, this is also a simple design of this bug boost converter. All these are bug boost means output voltage can be bug reduced or it can be increased like so can be provided even from 0 to even a higher than the input voltage in the this case all these and which while maintaining the power quality or power factor close to unity on the supply side. Then this is the jitter derived again bug boost converter here also you have a same number of element as the Kux epic uh, I mean Kux and epic and here also energy. So, you can design again 2 to power 3 design here also like I mean typically of this like and all of course the drawback of this that device is coming in series. So, you will have input current discontinuous. So, you can keep the EMI filter, but the size of EMI filter certainly increases. But the one major benefit compared to other topology is that your quality is not changed here. I mean like so it depends on relative merits and demerits of all the topology like I mean also. Then this is single phase bug boost improved power quality converter with the bidirectional converter by bug I mean you can put the power from input to output output to input, but you can clearly see here I mean this is nothing but uh, modified version of uh, because there is not much requirement of such nature, but it is indirectly you can call it is a matrix converter. So, you can have a unity power factor of course, on the input supply side ok and uh, for the input it becomes like a it work like a kind of uh, output as a inductor is there. So, it will work as a current source converter for a input it work like a voltage source. So, this converter can have a both features, but uh, you can understand number of components here are quite large you need the variational switches. So, you require like almost age 8 MOSFET or 8 IGBT for that like, but of course, circuit concept is possible, but of course, you can understand I mean like we will have derived other topology also, but this is one of the topology for bidirectional bug boost converter like. So, coming to like analysis uh, of these single phase bug boost converters. So, let us take first simplest case of your uh, taking example of single phase bug boost converter I mean so you it can provide the step down output voltage or even a step up voltage. So, you can vary the voltage over a wide range I mean you can have typically because of this region you can have a input voltage even universal AC means which we call it like a 0 to 70 volt you still you can have a power factor correction and output voltage can be even can be controlled from 0 to maybe 300 even 400 volt or so with the help of this converter. So, that is the wide flexibility only the disadvantage here is that the voltage across the device is the sum of input output voltage. So, that you have to select the device for quite high voltage rating like. So, the output voltage can be higher or lower than the input voltage and it is used in regulated DC supply where the negative quality output may be desired with respect to the common terminal of the input and the output to input to ratio because it is a bug boost converter. So, you have a this kind of relation which give you if duty cycle is below 0.5 that give the typically you can call it like a buck operation if duty cycle is above 0.5 it give the boost operation like I mean at 0.5 I mean it, it input output voltage will be typically the same like you can just see from that relation. So, this allow the VO to be higher or lower than the VD like I mean of course, it is a opposite polarity to normally people write a negative sign with the hair. So, this bug boost converter if we talk about first in continuous conduction mode for the analysis of this. So, when switch is on diode is reverse bias as you can see here I mean like you are just sorting the inductor input supply with the inductor and this output capacitor is giving the energy to the load or power to the load and the circuit is isolated and inductor charge. So, you can call it input voltage which is rectified diode voltage will be applied across the inductor. So, you will be increasing the inductor current and when switch is off then this inductor cannot current cannot be quenched quickly which was already flowing in this direction. So, it cannot be quenched quickly 
So, you will find the inductor energy goes to the capacitor I mean like with this typical relation that the inductor getting here, here inductor was charged, capacitor was discharged, here inductor is getting discharged, but capacitor is getting charged like I mean also here typically. So, their role reverses like and of course, we can have a inductor current flows continuously in continuous conduction mode as you can see here, we apply the across the inductor the input voltage and the current increases and when we uh, switch off the device that I would conduct, so we apply the output negative voltage, but the output voltage may be lower or the current reduces like. So, that is the process it goes and taking average inductor voltage which will over a period must be 0. So, you can keeping equal to 0 that is for on period, this is for off period. So, you will get this relation output upon input will be d upon 1 minus d which gives the relation corresponding to buck boost operation and if d is your less than 0.5 it give a buck operation, if it is a d equal to above 5.5 then it give a boost operation. So, assuming the considering the lossless component, so we can say input output is same power and from this you get a current, I mean for current relation is just inverse of this relation. So, depending upon the duty ratio the output voltage can be either higher or lower than the input voltage and considering the eta percentage a current ripple in the in the minimum inductor for continuous current conduction can be calculated from this relation from the same as we got typically from uh, period corresponding to turning on and where d is the on duty ratio and f is the switching frequency. Considering the slow varying voltage ripple at the output side diesel capacitor uh, I mean like because it is a second harmonics will be there. So, you can find out the output capacitor. So, inductor is calculated from here, capacitor is calculated from here. I am like from these two relations that give you the value virtually for the inductor and capacitor in the in this converter like. So, coming to now the single phase bug boost AC DC converters with high frequency isolation transformer isolation. We all discuss why we did the isolation. The very purpose of this isolation in the here we have shown one output, but you can have a multiple output I mean like uh, which give you multiple DC supply also of course, one have to be slowly tightly regulated, but other can be typically like uh, you can call it is uh, followed by the trans in the transformer. So, coming to the first like which is a derived topology from simple bug boost converter. So, here we are using that inductor as a couple inductor or you can call it people call it five back inductor or couple inductor I mean where the I mean of course, one winding will have at a one a time that is the reason we call it the inductor. So, here also I mean if you are operating with the current multiplier approach and you are designing this typically the uh, magnetizing inductance of this transformer in continuous conduction mode then you have to use current multiplier approach that we have reference voltage, feedback voltage, voltage controller that become the amplitude of the inductor current and you have a phase from here. So, you multiplied it, so you get the inductor current reference current and you sense this current here and that give you the getting signal for the devices. So, this is what we call it uh, you can call it for continuous conduction mode of operation of this bug boost flyback bug boost converter like. This is the most simplest converter, it is very extensively used from fraction of watt to typically order of a even 500 to 600 watt like I mean also. But major range of this is of, of course, you start I mean like a digital energy meter is a half a watt is the SMPS for which this uh, flyback converter is used because it is used as you can see the minimum number of component like I mean also in this converter like. Now, the second converter of course, is the bug bush your cuck derived converter with the voltage follower approach. So, here what we I, we already discussed now if it is isolated topology, you have a very interesting design of course, you want here the perfect correction that supply current should be in phase with the supply voltage. I mean like that is the improved power quality converter you can call it, but now you can understand here now we have a 5 energy storage element the input inductor output inductor because of the transformer in between we divide the energy transfer capacitor to in two part like C 1 and C 2 and then we have a magnetizing uh, inductance of this transformer. So, now you have a two ele five element and five element means now you will be having 2 to power 5 designs that is a virtually you can call it 32 design of this converter like. So, third I mean you have to select out of 32 design which one is the best for you. I mean like of course, we look into that of course, if you are designing for continuous conduction mode for all the energy in energy storage component like your C 1, C 2, L i, L o as well as magnetizing inductance. Then of course, this is one unique design all can be discontinuous that is another unique design, but you can have a one one in discontinuous like so after going through and but if it is a continuous conduction discontinuous conduction then 
only you can use the voltage follower means only the output output voltage loop is required to regulate the output voltage and uh, we look into several design and we found if you are keeping output inductor current discontinuous that give a best one of the best design you cannot say best out of 32 one of the best and then of course we have a control here that we are having a refresh voltage we have a feedback voltage and we have a voltage controller and this we compare with the of course the short typically short tooth wave of high frequency for which the transformer is designed and converter is designed and then we give the getting signal to this switching device switching device i mean depending upon low power it can be like a Typically, you can think about uh, it can be MOSFET, high power of course, we can take the IGBT, but uh, you can understand here this is the one of the best converter in the sense that in this transformer because of these two capacitors C1, C2, you are not allowing the any DC component to. So, we, that is the reason for nominal cases we design this converter around 0.5 duty cycle because for 0.5 duty cycle of course, the you can have, but the voltage ratio what for which we are designing that we can take with the help of transformer N1, N1 by N, I, N2. But you can have a multiple secondary also required for many, many applications like. So, the of course, transformer is providing isolation, another is the major is a multiple output, I mean with the help of this uh, we are providing and we are going high frequency to reduce the size of the transformer. So, that efficiency is enhanced, cost is reduced, size is reduced. I mean losses are also reduced in this converter. So, this consider one of the very good converter for the purpose of with the inherent power factor correction also how curves so I told you that you can keep any other, but even a single will do that over like. So, coming to like another converter that is single ended primary inductance converter with voltage follower approach again we are designing that we can in this case I mean like either we can have a discontinuous I mean current typically in this magnetizing inductor or input inductor or this capacitor like ok. And uh, of course, normally prefer to have a minimum uh, discontinuous current in this magnetizing inductance. So, we have a reference voltage, we have a feedback voltage, so we have a voltage controller and then we have a typically PWM pulse generator with comparing this output with the SAR tool and this gives the getting signal. So, it means we are designing either continuous discontinuous current in the in this inductor or this inductor. But if we design capacitor with discontinuous voltage then certainly the voltage rating of the voltage stress across the device goes multiply as well as the diode voltage also goes because already otherwise the device voltage is sum of the input and output voltage in all the typically of bug boost converter like also. So, the typically the next converter is single phase like bug boost zeta converter a series converter with the voltage follower approach. So, here also when you can design either this magnetizing inductance discontinuous or output inductor discontinuous or capacitor voltage discontinuous. So, normally we prefer to output inductor discontinuous and because of that we can use the voltage follower approach for output voltage control. Of course, in all even inherently you get the power factor correction on the input supply I mean by design itself. So, you have a reference voltage feedback voltage you have a voltage control and you compare this voltage control with the SAR to give a pedal pulses to the device like I mean also I mean in this zeta converter like. So, coming to this these are the typically you can think about like four, four converter flyback, Kirk, Sepik and zeta these are the form relation for output voltage as well as for magnetizing inductance for DCM CCM similarly for even for Kirk converter or DCM CCM and similarly for your Sepik converter and zeta converter like um, all these relations for these components calculation and for of course, in all cases because the output capacitor for the connecting the load have a second ripple to that relation remain common for all these converters right. And these are the typical after designing that if you talk about CCM in simple bug bush converter in contents conduction mode with the same 100 watt load with the 48 volt supply you can see the TAD in all the four cases I mean are lower than typically less than 5 percent and power factor is of course, close to around unity with each are the component calculated those are the relation here component calculated as well as control gains are given here typically like. So, coming to like again this uh, this was in CCM bug boost and uh, this is the comparison I mean all four you can think about like here I mean like uh, typically average current RMS current peak current device voltage rating device current rating and then the power density and of course, response you can call it a undershoot overshoot in the your output voltage like uh, and then coming to the DCM design for all these four converter in discontinuous mode with again 100 watt and 48 watt for buff flyback Kirk Sepik zeta converter 
and these are the TAD of course around in all cases even much less I mean almost less than 5 percent and power factor is again close to unity in all four cases and these are the component value with the gains of this even for DCM where you know you are avoiding the two sensors on the input voltage and current sensing like also. And this is of course the typically you can call it the their switch rating and relative switch rating for all four converter uh, as well as switch current rating, voltage rating and tangent response like I mean also. So, in no case of course, it is not going to be too much except in it a little bit I mean overshoot little bit more. And these are of course, the you can say in CCM continuous conduction mode in flyback topology you are getting TAD of supply current 3.66 percent. In case of cut converter you are getting 4.52 percent then SEPIC converter you are getting 4.78 and zeta converter you are getting 3.48 in CCM. And if you talk about design in DCM I mean for the same power of 100 watt with the 48 volt output which is very common for many many applications and you get TAD about 5 percent and then in this case of CUC you get 4.56 and SEPIC you get 4.91 and zeta you get 4.81 also. So, that is about coming to like now unless you design of single phase but boost flyback converter and this is typically the another you can think about the design analysis in DCM. So, here also the you have a diode design you have a flyback with the filter capacitor here and the output voltage regulation with the DCM design. So, and these are the typical waveform the switch current your typically diode current and the voltage across virtually I mean across the primary winding and uh, this is virtually your that was DCM with the uh, you can call it like a uh, your three mode you have a three mode here device conducting diode conducting and none of the three are conducting for this duration you have a three mode. But in CCM continuous conduction you have a two mode device conducting diode conducting and that is the reason you have feedback of voltage, but you have to take a feedback of your even the typically the voltage here as a shaping and then the current also going to the circuit and then you have comparing high frequency. So, here you have a two mode only device conducting diode conducting I mean like, but in DCM you have a three mode of operation. So, this is typically the analysis of course, for flyback the so average current over a switching cycle can be calculated from on period for D period and this can be like a peak current of half of uh, I mean typically from the tangle area I mean if you look into the typically in DCM this tangle. So, this is you can call it the area from this angle and then you can call it where I peak is the peak input current and the D is the duty ratio from figure you can find out I peak at the end of your on period and that is the peak current and typically you can call it where the VLR is the rectified output of diode and LM is the magnetizing. So, you can get I 1 from typically from VLR and VLR is nothing but you can call it like I 1 equal to I 1 and VL this. So, you can get I 1 from putting the value there v 1 into this. So, you can call it here I mean this I 1 I mean like uh, typically keeping the, the output ratio in terms of this. So, you can find out the from this DCM that duty cycle device conduction diode conduction will be less than 1. So, that you have a third period which we third duration which where none of the two are conducting and uh, you can from this relation you can get a trans ratio also from the output relation I mean like and then you can get a even for DCM the minimum inductance also for the relation and you should keep the inductance lower than that only you will go to DCM. Of course, the this you should be ensure at the maximum output power with minimum uh, input voltage because that will be corresponding to you can call it the maximum current appearing to and even at maximum current it should be discontinuous. And of course, the output capacitor is corresponding to your out your output load current and divide by of course, the your twice of the frequency or ripple factor like I mean or so. And you can call it the stresses on in DCM will be the peak current of device will be your V 1 D T S upon L m and the switch voltage will be V 1 plus eta V s. So, that is the reason we are calling the sum of input output, but here terms ratio also comes into picture. So, with that it is almost comes to double the and the diode current all is there and the draw you can call it the diode peak voltage will be this like I mean or from this relation. And for the continuous conduction of course, you have a very straight forward relation where you do not have a third mode the output voltage is in terms of input and the turns ratio there and the inductance you can find out that minimum inductance. So, you must have a for continuous conduction always the inductance more than that this is a boundary condition inductance and the switch of course, the peak current and then the you can call it the 
switch peak current and then there is the ripple. So, you can find out the RMS current of the switch, you can call it the your diode current, you can call it the peak corresponding to that and then you can have a diode RMS current like I mean. So, these are the typical relation to find out all the parameters or you can say rating of the component like. So, coming to the analysis and design of your single phase bug boost KPC. So, it is like again we were talking about that you are designing in continuous conduction. So, only output voltage loop is required with the PI you can put a controller here and then compare SAR2 to give gating signal I mean here and of course, I told you earlier you can have a lot of design, but maybe output inductor discontinuous will be. So, you have here three mode device conducting, diode conducting and none of the two are conducting I mean these are the three equivalent circuit in all three modes. And for continuous conduction mode of this clock drive again you have outer loop, the voltage loop then you are sensing the voltage to take a this is amplitude. So, this take the phase and you have to sense this current and then you give the compare the IRR with the SAR tooth and that gives the getting signal to this device. So, this is in CCM and there are only two mode in CCM that device conducting and diode conducting I mean here typically your device solid state device MOSFET or IGBT conducting here diode is conducting. So, you have only two mode here typically and these are of course, to simplify the analysis the quantity are referred to primary side of the transformer the volt ampere equation comes typically form. So, this is the voltage transfer to the primary. So, that is a typically you can call it the conduction of diode sorry MOSFET and this is the diode conduction duty cycle and refer to this and considering the current relation will be just exactly to the opposite to that and you can find out now typically the first stage of operation the current which will be some of the rising current plus initial because say uh, CCM. So, you will have a then current is starting from minus. So, these are I 1 I 2 and second stage of operation you can find out typically from these two relation like on and then you can find out from typically I 1 I 2 and the summing this you can find out typically this current which is flowing during the this period. So, and you have equivalent inductance for both like. So, these are the and then by substituting that into you can find out the I 1 value and in I 1 you have VLR you keep the value of VLR so, you can call it this is following the current in DCM. So, you can call it this is the peak current which is flowing into the circuit and because this is constant V 1 is peak value of supply voltage this is your fixed switching frequency time constant this is the inductance constant and if you keep the for output voltage duty cycle constant so I 1 will be constant in this relation. So, it means you are you can call it the input current will be following the input voltage that is the reason we call it the this voltage follower means input current follow the voltage in this end like. So, coming to like a typically calculation of your switch average current or peak current. So, this is the switch average current you can find out the form uh, virtually a rectangle diagram and this is the peak current going to be in the switch like I mean and these are the minimum maximum value. Similarly, for diode the average current and peak current and the switch peak voltage and the diode typically the inductor you can call it RMS current average current of the inductor and RMS current. So, this average current and typically the your maximum current in the inductor like. So, coming to now typically design description in typically conversion ratio that is input output conversion ratio and you can call it this is uh, the rectified voltage. So, when omega t 90 degree the conversion ratio you obtain as the first step and here V 1 is the peak voltage of input and second is condition for operation in DCM CCM. So, we to design must ensure DCM operation for which the following relation hold goods. So, K e that should be your 2 m plus n e square and K e is the conduction parameter n e is the transformer primary to secondary run ratio. So, from this for CCM you can get this condition should be K e should be more than this value and K e is calculated for minimum value of m occurs the so, minimum output voltage and maximum input voltage in CCM range. So, now, equivalent inductance which we already calculated earlier that comes LEQ as a combination of parallel combination of L 1 L 2 there and where all is the resistance typically of the load equivalent resistance and then you can find out the duty ratio the form to that like and the annual can be obtained considering a specify for DCM this is the value which you can get for just DCM as a boundary inductance where the R is the input ripple and L 2 can be obtained from the expression of and so, similarly for CCM L 1 L 2 can be obtained from the current ripple relation like and the typically for the the energy transfer capacitor like typically can be tend to it has a great influence on the input current waveform to avoid current oscillation at pre half cycle. So, it is given in terms of your uh, you can call it this uh, 
ripple frequency plus L1 and 2 where your omega r is in between omega L and omega S. The switching frequency it is a line frequency. So, resonant frequency should be lie between the line frequency and the switching frequency and output capacitor of course corresponding to all converter is corresponding to depends on the load duration and this is depends on line frequency and ripple the percentage ripple voltage in that like I mean also. So, now coming to modeling and simulation for these all uh, I mean bug boost converters. So, first coming to the flyback converter. So, these are the let us say the a design example that we have a 220 volt 50 hertz and we want 110 volt with the output power of 1000 watt and output ripple 2 percent and switching frequency 50 kilohertz. First we go to let us say DCM, so we can have a transformer trans ratio 1.5 to 1 and the calculated by design value LM is for because it is a DCM, so we are keeping less than 50 micro Henry and L your ripple filter is LF 1 milli Henry and 8 nano farad and output for typically of 2 percent it comes like a 15 milli farad and these are the typical result for DCM. You can have supply voltage supply current in phase and you can see the voltage I mean ripple voltage is hardly I mean less than 2 percent only 1 volt over 100 and 1 volt plus minus above and below and this is in case of CCM. You can see the CCM current is much better than the DCM I mean voltage and input current and that is output voltage and typically this is the you can call it the total performance the input current EAD I mean at different load is full load it is 51 per percent for DCM and for CCM it 4.4 and power factor is 0 0.997, 0 0.998 and of course the ripple is also you can call it is much lower I mean less than 2 percent what we consider it and these are the of course the component rating and uh, typically and of course in case of DCM we use the voltage control mode. Uh, voltage follower of voltage control mode and CCM we consider average current control mode like all. So, this is the typical performance relative performance of or all the major difference in CCM is you can see the current stress at lower I mean or even in this case also full load also the peak current rating of the device is much higher than the what you have allowed typically 3 times similarly even in case of your diode also it is around 3 times the current rating of the diode as well as the device like I am. Mean. And this is of course, uh, after looking the prototype I mean this is the supply voltage supply current of this and the power change from 60 watt to 200, 200. So, this is the output voltage and it is a load current which was corresponding to 60 watt L, then 200 watt and 60 watt again. So, you can see the dynamic the current remain in phase with the supply voltage and maintaining the unity power factor even during load perturbation also. Now, coming to the cut converter I mean that modeling simulation performance of so the let us say the input voltage is 160 to 270 volt 50 hertz and the output voltage is also 98 to 132 with the nominal voltage of typically of 120 volt and ripple output is 2 percent with the 50 kilohertz and turn ratio is 1 to 1 and these are the design corresponding to DCM. You can see input inductor 1.5 milli Henry output is 4.3 micro Henry so that we are designing for DCM and capacitor two capacitor on both the side 2.5 microvolt 10 microvolt and the output capacitor is 30 milli farad for the 2 percent voltage ripple here like and the performance here for DCM you can see voltage and current input and this is output voltage which have a less, typically less than 1 percent at 120 out volt output less than 1 percent voltage ripple like and this is for CCM operation continuous conduction mode you can see supply voltage and supply current they are in phase almost like a unity power factor no harmonics no reactive power and output voltage also have a less than 1 percent ripple in this. And this is the relative performance of this cut uh, converter I mean like this is for DCM this is for CCM that EAD value and typically the power factor closer to and of course the peak current in case of DCM is 3 times than approximately 3 times than this your continuous conduction mode that is one of the drawback of course in DCM for but the small rating you have a margin in the device rating like. And these are typically cut converter rating I mean when we are having a load varying from 60 watt to 200 watt, but you can see supply voltage and supply current is in phase with the supply voltage during even dynamics also or a higher load or lower load and typically and the controller brings the voltage back to the reference voltage of output voltage of 120 volt. Now, coming to the modeling simulation performance of single phase single ended primary inductance con AC to DC converter I mean if we design typically in your DCM, so we are sensing output voltage and using a PI controller and comparing SART with this, where we have designed in typically this in DCM mode 
or so, the only one loop is the voltage follower, it works in voltage follower mode and you have a three mode conduction, device conducting, diode conducting and none of the two conducting. That really we call it discontinuous conduction mode or so. And if you have a continuous conduction mode, so we have a output voltage loop, then followed by this is the give the peak, we take the phase form here, multiply it, so we get a template with that peak and then we have a inductor current, input current sensing and then using again PI control comparing the SATU to give the gating signal to the switch. So, this is for what we call it the current multiplier approach for control in when we design in continuous conduction mode like so. And this is we have a typically here, I mean typically two mode of operation, I mean device conducting, diode con conducting. And this is the design with 230, 50 hertz, 110 volt output with the 1.5 kilowatt, 2 percent here, 50 percent kilohertz and turns ratio 1.1. And here also you can see for discontinuous we are designing output inductor only, this is for continuous conduction, energy transfer capacitor of only 1 microfarad and output capacitor for 2 percent typically 30 millifarad almost in most of these and these are the control gains for this design. You can see the input voltage input current, they are in phase, current is sinusoidal and all phase, so par almost power factor unity and your typically the ripple output voltage is less than 1 percent, only less than 1 volt. And this is for continuous conduction input voltage input current, they are in phase and current is not disturbed and you have sine wave current almost and this is the output voltage ripple less than 1 percent. And this is typically you can find out the like a TRD for DCM and CCM in case of this CP converter and of course, the relative value like a power factor is almost like a unity all case like 0.99 or so more than that like. This is the experimental result for again 60 watt to 200 watt to 60 watt. You can see supply voltage and supply current are in phase and when you apply typically increase the load from 60 watt to 200 watt current increases, but remain in phase and current remains sinusoidal also. So, now coming to the modeling and simulation and performance of single phase GTAC AC DC converter. I mean first we design typically in discontinuous mode by with the voltage follower approach. So, we sense only the voltage and we have a reference voltage then putting a PI control with the limiter or saturation and compare SAR to then give the gating signal to for this device of this GTA converter. And for of course, you have three mode device conducting, diode conducting and none of the two are conducting that is the zone where none of the two are conducting. And if we talk about like a CCM with continuous conduction mode where we have a two mode only, so we have to sense typically the output voltage with the reference we compare put a PI controller multiply the phase of this and that gives the template for uh, with the amplitude of this control output and then we sense the current input and put a PI control over it and then compare SAR to and give the gating signal for switch like in continuous conduction mode. And here we have two mode device conduction, diode conduction and you have a here the waveform corresponds to two mode. And this is typically the rating again with the 48 volt output 1 kilowatt with the 220 volt 50 hertz and ripple uh, output voltage ripple 2 percent designed at 50 kilowatt and the tensor is of 5 to 1 and here also for typically you can see uh, here the input inductor we are designing discontinuous mode, output inductor continuous mode uh, typically I mean like output is 10 milli handy so only input inductor and these are of course the out typically the filter elements like also. And this is the you can say performance in DCM, the input voltage input current which are in phase and the output voltage ripple is less than typically 1 percent, 2 percent. And this is the of course, in CCM voltage and current and the output voltage again is hardly less than typically of 1 percent plus minus like. So, this converter is also developed again for 200 watt with 60 volt, 60 watt load and then 200 and then and you can see supply voltage supply current they are in phase and voltage of course, little down then it settled down. So, but you can say power quality is not affected, I mean it is still have a quite low and you can see the TAD here also less than 5 percent in case of D CCM and DCM and of course, the rating which we are talking about is almost like almost double for I mean as well as current stress is concerned or device or as well as on the diode like I mean also. So, coming to typically uh, like a coming to unless design and performance of PFC bridgeless bug boost converter. So, this is like a what we were talking about bridgeless uh, simple bug boost converter. So, here you can understand we are sharing a common inductor, I mean in this case the positive half cycle this device conduct and second this device conduct also with this. So, that is typically one configuration. The second configuration of course, we have again two devices for, for positive half cycle, negative half cycle. Uh, this is the another configuration of this 
your Bugbush converter for bridgeless configuration and then this is third configuration for bridgeless configuration also for the simple bug boot, but all have a power factor unity and harmonics also less than typically according to the So, coming to the design that you have input voltage which is a typically a rectified output of diode rectifier and you have a relation between input output. So, you can design the inductor in CCM from this relation for DCM you can design this relation the inductor should be less than this critical value. If you want to operate in boundary condition you can take equal to this value and the output capacitor is in all cases selected this. So, these are typically the they have design equation for getting the component value of input inductor I mean the inductor in case of this as well as output capacitor also. And these are typical value I mean this uh, is designed for develop for 350 watt with the output voltage 200 and supply voltage of 220. So, these are the input voltage input current and this is your inductor operating in discontinuous mode I mean uh, the inductor for positive half cycle inductor for negative half cycle as you can enlargely see it that how current is discontinuous like and these are the typically power quality you can just see here the TRD 4.8 percent power factor is unity even for the 316 watt I mean at voltage of 200 plus 1 to 3 watt typically 350 volt design like. You know. So, coming to like a analysis you know, design simulation of PFC bridgeless cup converter I mean this is the typically bridgeless cup converter you can just see here that for positive half cycle this operate and negative half cycle this operate as you can see from there it is your connection here. These are the input inductors, these are the output inductors, these are energy transfer capacitor for uh, you can call it positive half cycle and negative half cycle and these are the typical relation between input output and this is the input output inductor uh, output inductor design for both for CCM continuous conduction mode depending upon the cycle which you are getting from output input relation and this is the input inductor for positive uh, negative half cycle and of course, for critical mode for output inductor is the relation this. So, if you want to operate in critical conduction you can take this value if you are operating in uh, typically of discontinuous mode then you have to take much lesser than this value like you will have taken one third one fourth kind of value corresponding to what you are calculating from here. And this is the input inductor typically for DCM I mean this was CCM this is for DCM and this is the output of course, the capacitor, intermediate capacitor I mean C 1 C 2 for both half cycle like it depends on the voltage ripple, output voltage and duty cycle and equivalent flow resistance and switching frequency. So, all these components certainly you can understand inversely proportional to switching frequency. So, as you increase the switching frequency all these inductors as well as capacitors are reduced like. So, they are affected by switching and this is the output capacitor again from load current divided by twice the frequency because second harmonics get reflected on the DC link like common or from. And this is virtually the conceptual waveform that you have a input voltage you have input inductor for positive half cycle negative half cycle they are in continuous mode and these are discontinuous output inductor discontinuous mode and capacitor for positive half cycle energy transfer negative half cycle in continuous mode like I mean also. And these are typically the performance simulated performance of 500 watt and 300 volt output and 220 volt input. So, you can see input voltage input current they are in phase and current is almost like sinusoidal with the TAD of only 3.56 percent this current typically here and this is virtually input inductor positive half cycle negative half cycle which are continuous and this is the capacitor voltage for positive half cycle negative half cycle which are also continuous, but the output inductor current for positive half cycle negative half cycle they are discontinuous. So, it says the design I mean waveform you are correcting to correspond to what you are really applied the design for like and this is of course, the developed circuit for 500 watt with output voltage 300 volt and 220 volt input. So, this is your input current I mean like uh, supply voltage and your inductor current typically input inductor current and these are the typically your capacitor voltage with the voltage both are continuous and then this is your output inductor current which are discontinuous for positive and negative half cycle and these are the switch voltage stress and diode stress and these are typically the performance. So, you can say TAD is only 3.8 percent for 510 watt and power factor is unity and you can see the supply current and supply voltage they are in phase and current is almost like a distortion free with this 500 watt design of this bridgeless cup converter like. This is another topology of power factor bridgeless cup converter I mean typically again for positive and negative half cycle and then this is another topology third topology there are lot of topology which are there with the power factor correction on the supply side for all these I mean the third topology then fourth topology of the cup converter they people modified 
according to their application requirement like amino so this cup converter and here output inductor shares input and output inductors are shared only what we are including here even the output diode is also shared only what we are adding there only the typically kind of the devices for positive and negative half cycle. So, a lot of in innovative technology have been the topology have been there for all these converters. This is the fifth topology we have cup converter for bridgeless version of that for power factor correction also. So, coming to like a like analysis design simulation and, and performance of your bridgeless septic converter. So, this is the septic bridgeless converter that positive half cycle and negative half cycle these are the two. So, this is with this inductor and capacitor positive and this is for negative half cycle and these are the relation that output voltage relation the output inductors for positive and negative half cycle then the input inductor positive negative half cycle and then the this is for critical mode or you have to keep for DCM less than that and this is the DCM for input inductor design and this is the capacitor for energy transfer values like for both positive and negative half cycle both are identical and this is the output capacitor for second harmonic ripple how much you can permit. So, that is virtually the design equation based on that you can design it and this is the second version of this bridgeless power factor correction bridgeless septic converter I mean for positive negative half cycle. This is the third you can call it the topology corresponding to your bridgeless version and this is the fourth topology of shaping your bridgeless septic converter with again power factor correction and this is fifth topology you can see fifth topology of your bridgeless septic converter like and these are the typically for the fifth topology you can see the supply voltage supply current uh, your DC link voltage and the inductor current input inductor current continuous then the output inductor current discontinuous for positive negative half cycle capacitor voltage energy transfer capacitor voltage for half cycle continuous and switch voltage switch current and this is the TADF one only 1.95 percent for 800 watt and output voltage 300 watt and 220 volt supply line. So, coming to like a analysis design and simulation performance of uh, perfect correction bridgeless zeta converter. Coming to zeta converter, I mean this is first topology for positive half cycle and negative half cycle that is bridgeless version, no diode bridge is there. So, this is the output voltage and this is the output inductor for continuous conduction, this is input inductor design for uh, continuous conduction and this is boundary condition for which you have to keep for DCM less than that for output inductor and this is the output inductor input inductor for DCM if you want to design and this is the energy transfer capacitor for this zeta converter and this is the output capacitor calculation corresponding to second harmonics and ripple voltage I mean which you really have for capacitor design for output and these are the typical for design for 800 watt the output voltage of 300 and D you are getting TAD 2.1 percent with the supply voltage supply current almost in phase and almost sinusoidal current and input current continuous for positive half cycle negative half cycle and the output inductor discontinuous for positive and negative half cycle, capacitor voltage continuous for positive and negative half cycle and with the TID quite low of 2.12 percent like common. And this is of course, the second topology for zeta converter for bridgeless zeta converter also coming to like a design simulation performance of PFC bridgeless canonical switching converter. So, these are topology first topology of canonical switching converter for positive half cycle negative half cycle and this is the relation for output input voltage the input inductor typically inductor design the transfer capacitor design and the input inductor design the inductor design for DCM this was for CCM and output capacitor design like for a given voltage ripple here like on. And these are the typical experiment result for 350 watt converter with the output voltage 200 volt and 220 volt supply. So, this is supply voltage this is the you can call it the inductor current for positive half cycle negative half cycle and the capacitor voltage for positive half cycle and negative half cycle continuous voltage and inductor current discontinuous and this is the performance with the TAD of 3.7 percent of supply current and power factor unity you can see the supply voltage and supply current is quite good waveform like on with the power factor correction unity like here and thank you.